Hi, good evening, Nana here. In this session, we are now going to see uh, the supplier import actually. We have already completed the purchase order import. Now we are going to see supplier import as far as procurement is concerned. So we'll go in and then have a look at it now. So I've already shared you the fusion procurement records. So it's now running up to, uh, see, up to 22. 23 now so now we are going to go for the 24th uh, session on this uh, purchase orders which is nothing but a supplier import actually <clears throat> so in this place if you go on and have a look at it so if you open up my additional fusion additional docs and records then i have given a lot of docs on there so if you have a look at it the 26th one is going to give you the user guides implementation guides efbda template etc fine let's open it up now so we have a uh, uh, URL for going to the user guides, implementation guides, as well as the BDA template. I'm taking copy of it now and then we'll put it on this place now. Page two, yeah. <clears throat> so it's a cloud documentation. And then if you go on and have a look at it now, fine. You choose your module first of all. Now. You can choose a module. So for me, it's a procurement. Fine, click on the procurement module. And then afterwards, uh, choose our version now. Fine. Now I'm working on 19B now. Fine. The version is 19B. Fine. Drop it down and then choose the 19B over here now. So after having chosen this, what happens? You go there and then choose the books now on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side bottom, you'll be having a books now. You click on the books. So we have got plenty of user guides and then implementation guides available over here. <coughs> Administration guides, everything. And then there, you have to go on the, go to the file-based data import available under the development actually. So we'll go there. And now, in the bottom, you'll be having development and this will happen the file-based data import. So in this, what happens? The self HTML link and then you go to the file-based data import. Go there. So click on the HTML link of this development, and then here you go to the suppliers model. So we have around eight uh, templates are available here. So uh, I'm not going to do uh, some of them basically. I'm not going to do out of eight. Only five I'm going to do it. The remaining three are lab exercise for you. So let me click on the import supplier address now first. And click on it, and then let me save it over here now. I click on it, and then I'm going to make a save now. I will now choose my Fusion ACM training. And then I go to uh, your additional docs and records. <clears throat> this supplier import is the directory I created, in which I'm going to straight away save this one. So the next is attachments is a lab access for you. I'm not going to do it now. Do it now. And then the business classification is also a lab access for you. <clears throat> attachments and business classification lab access for you. Let me go and then do the contacts. I click on the contacts. And then supplier contacts import template. And then let me save it. I click on the link. And then I'm going to save it to the same place. Next is what supplier products and services is also a lab access for you. I'm not going to do it. I go to the supplier assignments, site assignments. I click on the import site assignments. I click on it. And then let me save it on this place now. Click on save. So click on the import supplier sites now. So you go to the supplier sites and supply site import. If I click on it now. And then save it. And then afterwards, finally, suppliers. And click on the port suppliers. This is the fifth template which you're going to download now. Click on save. So we have downloaded all the templates from this place now. So now let us go there and then open it up and then edit it actually. So we're going to open up and edit now. Click on it. So let us now open it up and then edit now. <clears throat> we're going to edit it now. So we will now open it up and then edit. We'll go to this place. And then uh, uh then we'll go to this place. And then you go to the what's it called your fusion uh uh, our additional docs and records, and then go to the supplier import now. So, first is suppliers now. Go there. So, we will now open the supplier import template. Double click on it. You're going to edit it now. <clears throat> so, here yeah, it has got only one sheet here. Fine, click on it and then go there. So, let us now remove everything now. Fine. They have given a common batch number. Batch number is not a mandatory one. Fine, let me remove it now. Batch number is required only for item import. Fine, other things it's not a mandatory. Let me delete all other things, whatever they have created. So with the first one, I'm going to work upon it. It is not enabled for editing. I click on enable for editing now. I'm going to enable it for editing. And then afterwards, I will now choose the other one now. So sixth onwards, let me go there and then delete it. Now delete. We have only let me delete the batch number also. It's uh, the options are create and update now. Fine. I'm not going to create it now. Fine. So let me create a01 underscore imp underscore subcontract. 
So the import supplier, I'm going to create it not only the tax corporation supplier. And then it is not a prospective one. I'm going to, with the prospective supplier, we can only make the RFQs and quotations and not the purchase orders. So drop it down and then make it as a spend authorized. And the user use now and do that. Click on it. And then taxpayer ID, I'm removing it now. And do that. Uh, nothing else is required actually. Fine, go there. Click on show additional attributes. They are now showing your supplier number. Fine, I don't need that. So if you give this 3997, if the LBA supplier is existing, what happens? It will not create it all. Fine, let me remove it now. Fine, so that the system will be allocating the supplier number automatically. So don't put your manual number. If the number is already existing, it will now fail actually. Fine, remove it now. And the additional attribute follows. Fine, go there. And that's it. Fine, go there. We are now completed the filling of this template actually. Fine, control is complete. Saving it. You go there. And then uh, let us now go there and then I will now use this uh, one template now. I will now, uh, uh, I will now create a new uh, directory now. Click on it and then I will now save it now. So click on new and then I will now go to the folder now. I will now say sub import with the directory in which whatever I am going to save it now. <clears throat> so I am in the Excel sheet now. So I go to the first one and then here I will go there. click on generate CSV. And then there is a common note which is given in the bottom that what happens from 18B onwards. So the following fields also has to be filled up. Now, right? Pay service level, pay each document alone, delivery method, remittance emails, etc. And the remittance facts. Right? These things are required to be set up actually. Uh, I don't know how to I try to understand this from a financial guy because I am a supply chain man and then I'm not aware of what, how to fill it up. Now, right? So this is what it is written now actually. We'll now see whether. Uh, we are able to succeed uh, without uh, what happens. The setups might have been done because I'm working on a vision actually. So vision setup might have been done, but uh, otherwise what happens, you take a note of it and then in your uh, real uh, instance, when you're setting up your own structure, you have to have a look at it. Now. So the click on generate CSV, fine. I'm going to generate CSV. Click on the generate CSV. And then here what happens, I'm going to say it's a A01 underscore sub layer. So here I will now, Sub import to the directory which I created now. I'm going to click on C column. I'm going to call sub import, supplier import, and go there and then save it. Supplier import, and click on save now. So, by which what happens is now coming. So, it shows there is only one sheet which is there. Fine, do not modify the sheet and then oh, save it on the same one. Fine, click on save now, and that's it. Now, what happens is you save this and then without saving it, close the file without saving it because what happens uh, it creates some more extra sheets. You no, know, fine. So, those sheets should not be saved. So, give us don't save and then. Come out of it now. Now we go to the instance now. Fine, go to the instance and then let us now run the load interface file for import now. Find the one. So load interface file for import. Click on OK now. That which will be running. And then we have to pass on the parameters for this load input file. So we have to first of all choose the UCM area exactly. Fine. The universal content management area has to be chosen now. Then drop it down. It is basically import suppliers. Fine. Go down. Go down. Somewhere in this area it will be there. Import suppliers. Yeah, we have to. So it's a supplier model actually, and import supplier is the one with the UCM area. Drop it down. Since I have not brought the file into the UCM area, I can bring it up by this way. Click on upload a new file. The universal content management, what happens? We can very well bring it over there. Click on choose now. And then here, I will not choose this one. Go to the supplier import now. So we have one file available here. And then the supplier import, we have on this one. Choose the supplier now. A01 supplier. Click on open now. And then click on okay. By this process, we are now bringing our uh, CSV separated file into the UCM area actually. <clears throat> we can even do it uh, separately by uh, uh, import export or otherwise uh, during the load interface activity itself we can do it. Now it has come into the UCM area and then click on submit it will be coming to the interface tables of a supplier model. And then it will be running now. It will be coming to the interface area of the supplier model. So one when this is completed what happens we can now bring it to the base tables now. It's not running. So you go to the whole your suppliers. So in this place, if you see in the supplier area, uh, uh, how I came, I will now show you. Click on it now. <clears throat> I go to the procurement and then I go to the suppliers now. My procurement suppliers, I'm going over there. So in the procurement suppliers, I go there and then I click on it on the right hand side, task browser, and then click on the import suppliers. Now. I'm now going to perform import supplier now. So we'll now have a look at it whether the concurrence are got completed or not. So all the three concurrence have got completed. Fine. No transfer file, go to interface file, whatever goes fine. Click on it. And then let me import it. Now. Click on actions and then go to import supplier. <coughs> so keep all the parameters as such and then click on submit now. By which nothing is submitted. Click on it. So this concurrent is now going to run now. We'll have a look at it now. <coughs> so 
<coughs> it has succeeded and then click on the view output now. You know how I look at the output now. And click on that. Now see whether the success import has succeeded or not. And then save it into a, a location. I click on save now. I'm getting saved. And then your view is shown now. Open the PDF file to have a look at it whether it has now got successfully completed or not. Click on PDF file. <coughs> The PDF file is now opening now. So this will not show you. Fine, go ahead, click on it. So here it says number of suppliers not imported is zero, and then number of suppliers imported is one now. And go ahead, click that on. And then again, what happens? The number of suppliers not imported is zero on the second page now. And go to the third page now. The third page, what happens? It says what is the create action is successful actually. The total number of suppliers imported is one. A zero one. Imp sub one has now been so the supplier number has been allocated as zero one one five actually. So go ahead, close it now. Fine. This is now coming. So we have to do the remaining four as such now. Let us now do the remaining four now. And import supplier is not there. We will now do the remaining four as such now. So we will now open up everything and then first of all uh, do the this thing now. Uh, I will now go to uh, what usually is CM training. And then I go to the fusion additional box and talk about the supplier import. First one is not completed. Supplier is not completed. So the next activity is address now. So supplier is now completed. Address, let me go and do it. Let us complete all the sheets and then afterwards we will go there and then do a load now. Then we'll click on it. Supplier address import is now going on. Open it up. Open the Excel sheet now. So click on enable editing. Go there. And then here I won't go to this. This is I'll say again got only one sheet now. Fine. Click on the supplier address. So click on the supplier address. Go to space. So let me delete this now. And then uh, let me open up the previous sheet also, right? the supplier sheet also, supplier import sheet also. Right? And that what happens again very well. Take a copy of the supplier now. Take a copy of the supplier. And then we go there. We go to this place. Uh, we go to this place now. The supplier name, fine. Right? It is not an update actually. Right? Remove the batch number. And then one update is a create actually. And drop it down in the negative to create. The supplier name, I'm pasting it now. I will now say it's the address name. I'm going to create A01 address one. Address one, the one. So the one. Home team. Fine. Show additional attributes also. Fine. We don't have a look at that. Uh, because some attributes may not be required. Uh, address one. <coughs> address one. I will say A01 address one. No. Two, three, four is not required. Go there. I'm not filling up any of the fields actually. City state. The pin code. Everything you can fill it up. Not fine. I'm not going to fill up. Any. Nothing is a mandatory field actually here. Now. So you can see uh, the import action is a mandatory one. The supplier name is a mandatory one now. And afterwards, we'll see. Nothing else is mandatory actually here. So you know, leave other the columns as such. Uh, we'll see every email. In the remit to email, that is what it is saying. Fine. In the uh, last one, what happens? The remit to email is there. What happens? It has to be properly set actually. There are some three or four things which uh, pay alone, remit email, etc. I have shown you know, fine. Those fields have to be set properly. So I am not setting up anything. And the address one is there. I will now say uh, the site. Name. So supplier name, and then the address name, and then what happens? I will now say address one. I will now say I will put an address line one. So that's it. Fine. So we will now give a create and let us commit. So by which it is now saved. Now go ahead, click on it. And then an address, this is the address file actually. Fine. It's like uh, address import now. So everything else is okay. You know how about it again? <clears throat> and not filled up many other columns actually. Uh, so in reality, you have to fill up so many applicable columns for the supplier address actually. You know, then fine. Go to the place and then you go to the instructions and then you know, import generate CSV. I'm not going to enter the address. If you want to do the A01 underscore, you know, say address. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. So if the supplier import the directory if I go there and then the A01 address and click on save now. And it has got what supplier address? One second. <laughs> click on save now. You're going to show the one sheet if I click on save now. So it's not done. I'm going to close it without any saving. So address is now created. Next, next is what contact me. Let us now keep these files as such. No fine with that. I know um, open up the supplier. Okay, this is sufficient. Next is contact me. So supplier is now completed. <coughs> supplier, uh, 
for the uh, supplier side, and then the supplier assignment, supplier report is completed, then address is completed, then we'll now go and create the contact info. Supplier contact info. So contact import, we are now opening it up. So it's a supplier import is not showing, is not yet opened actually. It must have got open now. So we are now open it up. The store. <coughs> and enable editing. Enabling editing. Maximize it and then go down. So it has got two sheets actually. Go to the first one. I don't know. Remove these two sheets. <coughs> Batch also. Remove, remove it. Is a create one file. Supplier name. I will now bring it from the previous file now. Uh, and create one. As we have the file name here. Over this place. And then I will now paste it over here. To the supplier name. So the first name. <coughs> I will show additional attributes also. <clears throat> the prefix is, I will now remove it now. And go there. And then I will have it. Something else was populated now. The four fax code area. Fax code area code. That's okay. That is not a big problem as such. Some of the things are really very sensitive. Uh, if the setups are not done, not done in the tables, it will not work at all properly. So that's it. Fine. Go there. So supplier name is there, fine. The contact interface is there. Uh, first name, <coughs> I will not put Ananta. And then last name is Nana. And I'm putting these two names only. Because some fields are added, not, it's not showing me clearly because you see the import action as well as supplier name are only having a star mark. The remaining are not having a star mark. Any are not giving these two information. So fine. The remaining I have not removed it. Fine. Some fax numbers and I think they have left it as such now. In reality, you have to fill up everything and go there. then go to the second sheet now. Click on the second sheet. This is the one. Uh, and then you go to the second sheet now. I will now delete these two things. Now. Batch ID, you know, creating it and deleting it now. It's a great action. Supplier name, I will now go back to the first sheet and then take up the name now. Take a copy of the name now. And then go to the second sheet. Paste it over here. Address mean. <coughs> address name. So is address name it is asking for. So you know, see the address name. So address name is not there in this file. So you know, go to the next one. You know, open up the address one time. The address name. You know, open up the address name. So this is the address name actually. So take copy it and then populate the address name over here. It is a supplier import middle one. It is a supplier contact import. So it is a uh, it is in the second sheet now. So address name and pasting it. So address name is pasted now. First name and last name. Ananta and then Nana. So email address, I'm putting it up by me at u.com. So let me put some email now. Okay, nothing else is required on the second sheet. So the first name and last name has to match, I think, now fine. In this place, we are given the first name and last name. So I think this has to match on the second sheet. I'm not sure about it. If you don't match it, what will happen? I'm not sure about it. And if it's not matched, and then I will not give a say. So it has got two sheets now. So the supplier contact has got two sheets. So that is not done. So you go to this place, and then let us know. Do the import. Click on the generate CSV file. <coughs> and then I will not say A01 underscore contact. Contact the one. And then I will know. To the approach, sub import the one and go there. So, supplier import and then I know import. And the supplier address and this is the contact now. <coughs> contact with the file. Click on save now. It has got two sheets. It lost both the sheets. The sheet names don't modify it. And then in the same directory, I do it now. Click on save now. <coughs> and then one more sheet also is coming. Click on OK. Two sheets are coming. Click on OK. And then close it down. The third is not on. Next is site. Fine. For site, uh, you have to have the procurement agent uh, being defined on the system as such. No? And the already defined. And so no need to worry at all. Otherwise, what happens? You have to make the purchase the, the user as a procurement agent actually. I will show you but where exactly it is now. Uh, I will not right click on then what happens here itself will not show it to you. Go to click on it. You go to the navigator and then you go to the setup and maintenance. And then ensure that uh, the person has been created as a uh, procurement agent. Otherwise, site creation is uh, basically not allowed. Thank you so much. So the task name is manage percentage procurement percentage A G E N T percentage manage procurement agent. This is responsible for site creation actually. Let us now query for the uh, is the instructor 
so the supplier name is not correct in this supplier address import template now <clears throat> so we have to correct that also so supplier name let me bring it over here click on it supplier name is this <clears throat> so before this before going over there whatever so let us now correct that address template now and click on it so the in between is the address import template the supplier name i have to paste it over here and bring it over Imp sub one of them. Okay, okay. The address template, supplier address import template, supplier name was not proper actually. Okay, okay. And then another one, another mistake. Another I had out not uh, not properly seen it actually. Supplier address one, the address nine one is the one. And we got a new sheet. So let us now go on and delete it. Then again make it new. Supplier import. <laughs> So the address one is wrong. Should delete. And that one more thing on the address also will be deleted. The contact, the contact name. Now address has to be again brought in over there now. So the the address, the address site address import now. Go to this place. So don't make any mistake because otherwise what happens will be uh, really troublesome actually. Click on it and then let us know import address we had import now. Go there. So click on the generate CSV file now. So it's a E zero one underscore address. Yes, yes, no. So on the same supply report, I'm going to save it. Now. And I've got only one sheet. No. Thank you, Kansi. Now I am in the what's called. I am in the, the supply report is okay. I am in the supply report. So I am in the supply site report. Inside the site report, the procurement BU, the procurement BU has to be very proper. So the procurement BU is uh, uh, US one business unit now. And let me take a bit. The legal entity of business. Look at it. So it's a US one BNU or capitals. And go there. I will not populate this. <clears throat> the procurement BU. I'm populating it already. And then uh, the address name has to be brought fine from the address file actually. Fine. We'll now open up the address file also. Let us open up the address file now. So we'll go supplier import now. <clears throat> so it was supplied import. We will now open up the address import. My address file is there. Ah, not this file actually. I have to go to the other area and then open it up. Go to the same. And then I will now go there. You go to the additional box on the pause and then go to the supplied import. And open up the address. Supplied address import template. Open it up. From there, the address name has to be brought in. And the address name is this. So take a copy of it. Address name. And then put on this place. So address name has been copied from here. So we are in the supplier site import now. Fine. Address name has to be paste. And then the supplier site. Fine. The supplier site. 
this i am going to create now only by site one integrity one so now show additional attributes also if there is anything unnecessary we have to remove it now so the supplier site is coming that's okay so sourcing only is no purchasing is yes and then the payables pay is yes sir and then the pay is yes no fine so pay and the, uh, what happens here uh, uh, purchasing the purchasing is not made as yes no purchasing is yes here and then the pay is also yes the remaining are not being primary pay is no that's okay <clears throat> go further and then here i will now say communication method is email the email address is what me at the rate u.com give some email since the communication method is email so i am now having a look at other things now so default pay site is remove it now it will not kept as a berlin actually so try to enrich this sheet with the more and more information you see but they are succeeding it or not i'm not doing only for bare minimum only uh it's okay uh, and this place ship to location i'm going to do ship to location uh, may be required actually uh, ship to location <clears throat> in the site level uh, very good go <clears> there <throat> go to this place uh invoice currency invoice amount invoice match payment currency nothing i'm giving actually mm. uh invoice currency and payment currency is also excellent fine if you give it to be nice actually fine. there you go we're not not giving anything at all you know see allow take this count i'm not remove it now. because i want it to first of all in the system actually without any errors now later on you can even think of adding it that's okay fine all the attributes are okay fine we can go now strength will be through purchasing only purchasing is okay. i think this much is sufficient okay fine the email id is okay i don't give anything we'll not say but that goes on fine to commit fine save it now fine supplier site is now getting ready on the first sheet actually and then we will now go to the third party relationship so it is now saying update and create they want to have a third party relationship uh, i don't think is required so this is uh, for the tca architecture in which what happens you're going to make a third party payment also so i'm not giving anything at all on the second sheet i'm going to come to so supplier site is now uh, ready i'm working on it again how about it so supplier name is there b is there address name is there and there's some important things <clears throat> site one so the site is site one <clears throat> Okay, so it's not safe, and then it will not go on that. Go to the instructions, see, and then I click on that. What is it? Generate CSV file, and then I will not say A zero one. I will not say site. Site is the one. So the fourth sheet which I am doing, and now click on save now. It has got two sheets, so both the sheets will be coming. You don't modify the sheet. Click on save now, and then go further, and then do the save of the second sheet also. Is not that fine? Close it without a save now. Without a save, you close it now. Don't save. No, no. Right. no, the final one is going to come up now. Fine, there is a site assignments actually. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to open the site assignments. <clears throat> so the site assignments, right? now, the five sheets which are taken up now. So double click on it. So site assignments, I'm going to do it now. <clears throat> so click on generate CSV. Again, enable editing. So here uh, we have to set it up on the do it now. Fine, we'll click on it. So uh, not generate CSV first now. Fine, I'm going to remove the batch ID. Is a create now. I know the supplier name. I'm going to populate in this place. Click on it. There is no populate the supplier name. Supplier name is there. On it. So it's a site assignments. I will not populate the supplier name. The supplier site is site one now. Procurement BU. I will not take it up from this place now. So take it up it and I will not put the procurement BU over here now. So nothing else is there. Supplier assignment is not coming up. I click on the show additional attributes now because some additional attributes may be built to be you. Fine, built to be you is required actually. I will click on it. I will not take a wait a moment. I will not put the built to be you. So, ship to location, uh, Seattle. Seattle, you go there. Built to location is also Seattle. This is the amount's location now. Use withholding tax. I will not remove it now. Fine, withholding tax to remove it. Uh, no, go for that. Go for that. It will be actually be done by the payable team. Actually, 
So we are now client BU. So fine, client BU is also a small client. I take it as an input in the client BU also. So this much of information has been provided. We are now going to work us. Go there, save it. The final sheet is now getting ready. Click on it. It has got only one sheet. Fine. The previous one only has got two sheets. Fine. Click on it now. I will not go to this place and then click on generate CSV. The batch ID has been removed. And then click on it. And then click on generate CSV. So I will say A01 underscore whatever site assignments. Site assignment is one. Click on save now. This is the only one sheet. Fine. Click on save. Done. And then close the file now. Now, having done all these things, we'll now go to the system and then bring it to that. What's called your interface table is not fine. Click on schedule process now. And click on it. So, next is address. Supplier is now already gone in. And the next is address now. So, we are going to bring in the address. So, supplier address we are going to bring in now. <clears throat> so, drop it down and then uh, do the import process of supplier address actually. Uh, import supplier address actually. Import supplier address. If you're finding it difficult to understand this, what happens? You can go there, click on the search now, and then here you put supplier and then import and then give a search now. Fine. Yes and I are capitals now. Fine. Click on search now to also show you the limited ones. <clears throat> supplier E L I R I M P O R T. Uh, one second. Supplier and then make a search now. Fine. I made a mistake or what? Import processes. Oh, import supplier. Import supplier. Import supplier and then make a search now. This is the way you add a search now. Fine. You'll be able to see this now. Fine. So now it's a site assignments actually. Fine. Choose this one. So number of uh, entries are less actually. So import site, supplier site assignments. Okay. Now. okay now. And then drop down and then bring the file to the uh, not the site site assignment. Sorry, I made a straight on fine with the import address actually. I have to choose the import address now. Fine. Import supplier and then give a tab now. When you give a tab, it's not coming. It is the first is what address in uh, uh, import supplier. Import supplier address is the one, first one. I have to choose the address now. So import supplier addresses the one. Okay, okay now. And now for the address has to be after supplier, whatever the address has to be brought in now. Upload a new file. Choose a file now. So we'll now choose the supplier import file, find address file. A01 address. Okay, okay. This is a zip file we have to choose now and not the individual Excel files. Choose the zip files now. Okay, okay. open. And again, okay, by which what happens? We are now bringing it to the UZM area. So supplier address is now coming up to the UZM area. So it's not it has now come to the museum area and then click on submit, it will now come to the interface area. So supplier address is now done. Then the contacts has to be brought in now. I don't know why they have made it as eight templates. They should have made it as eight sheets or something like that now. Uh, one, one Excel sheet with eight sheets. I don't know why they have done it. There may be some reasoning you can even discuss the financial days. You will find you know that. I click on this. So, supplier addresses come now. Fine, go that. So, next is what? Contacts. So, import supplier contact actually. Import supplier contact is the UZM area. <coughs> so, we will not go there. So, drop it down and then we will not try to go from here on. Import supplier contact actually. So, we go there. Import supplier contact. So, implement supplier contact is coming and we'll click on it. And then now, third file, we are bringing it to the interface tables actually. I choose file. So, supplier contact now. Choose the contact and open now. And click on OK. So, the third file is now coming to the UZM area. So, once when that is come, we will now bring it to the interface tables. So, click on submit and then wait for the concurrent to complete now. It will be getting completed now. So, we'll now go for the fourth one now sites. Click on it. I will not bring the fourth one, which is sites actually. So drop it out. Import supplier sites. Import supplier sites is the one. The fourth one. And drop it out. 
choose a file <clears throat> and then the site the zip file which i'm opening it up on the click okay by which we are now bringing it to the UCM area the universal content management area and then once on the submit it will now come into the interface tables so click on submit and then, and then the final one is now going to go for the site assignments click on it let us now do the import of the site assignments actually import supplier site assignments is the UCM area. So we have to choose the appropriate UCM area and then bring it over here and drop it down. Somewhere you go there in this place, it will be there, this place, this area. Import supplier site assignments, import supplier site assignments. The final one, which you are now bringing it into the, uh, uh, what is called interface tables actually. So site assignments is the one, click on open, click on okay. This process brings it into the UCM area and then upon submission, it will be coming into the interface tables. So click on submit now. And warning. So ensure that all the things are reached the interface tables within any error actually. So this one is now running up. So once when this completes it, what happens will be reaching the interface tables. So the last content of this is now running but it's been completed. Now let us go to the next one now in this area. We will now go to the home icon and then we will now bring it over here now. Click on it. Go to the procurement and then go to the suppliers now. Import process is uh, pretty easy. So you might have, uh, do not exceed more than 500 rows in one import actually. Sometimes what happens is beyond 500 rows is gives an error actually. Right? Once of, uh, every, uh, even the APD play itself, what happens you put only 500 rows. If it gives error, it will be very uh, agonizing. Uh, then again, talk to the uh, Oracle uh, regarding what is the present limit because I'm telling about a uh, long time back to the limits now. So the limits might have been removed actually. So go to the import suppliers. And then supplier is now done. Fine, go there. Now go there. Click on it and then go to the actions and then go to the next one. In this order you go as far as the import is concerned now. Next is what import supplier addresses. Click on it. Import supplier addresses. No changes in the parameters. Click on submit now. No running. So, go there. Supplier addresses, and again, the order in which I brought into the uh, into the uh, area of what happens interface tables, uh, I don't go by that part. There's no error doubt actually. So we'll now see what are the error now. Find supplier addresses. We've got an error. Come on, we having error now. So the C colon, let us go there and then have a look at the error now. <clears throat> the PDF file shows you the error now. So supplier it is not imported as one actually. And then go down and import it as zero and we will see what is the reason for the error actually. Oh God, so many things are required actually. So value is required, you must provide a value for the country. Country is missing actually. At least one of the following must be there, fine. ordering purpose flag, remit to purpose flag, and then at least one of the flag required for bidding purpose maybe. Fine. Uh, must be yes actually, ordering purpose, so this is missing actually. And then afterwards, yeah, at least one of the following must be yes, ordering purpose flag, remit to purpose flag, again the same thing actually. Uh, this is for RFQ or bidding, the remit to purpose and then ordering purpose. Basically. At least one of the following must be yes. So uh, basically all the three put together is only one is required and then the country is also missing. Now. And let us go there and then correct the problems now. So the country, the value is required, you must provide a value for the country. The country is required. Is it one of Let us now provide these values now. I am doing it for the first time and so what happens, I am also struggling actually. <laughs> I did it for a very long time back and then I forgot the number. So uh, I will now go to the address now, and supplier address import template. <clears throat> so this is a supplier address import template. So the value of the country is required actually. So how it was, it was United States or what exactly? Uh, I have to have, I have to put the exact value of the country actually. Uh, we have basically deleted the, that one now, fine. Let us now go there and then bring it back and then see this now. So 
let us not go there and then bring it back because country has to be uh, United States or US United States of America, US United States is sufficient or not. I'm not exactly sure about it now. So go there and then let us know again go there and then have a look at it. Now. It's a big marathon exercise actually. So let's try to do it in a very proper manner. <clears throat> Let's go there. Let us go to this place and then bring it in. Now. Go to this place. Open the fusion additional docs and records. <clears throat> and then in this place, the 26 file will now go there. Open it up. And then put it in. Then we'll again download the template and then see what country value they have given. Because I might not have deleted it. I don't know. I'm not sure about it. Right? You know, the deleting means is a mistake, actually. Some of the fields are really mandatory. Yeah. <clears throat> now go to this place. And then I will now choose the procurement over here now and the 19B over here. And then here I will now click on the books now. And go down. I will now go to the development and then click on the HTML to create. And the address is now giving a problem. Thank you on it. So I will now go to the address. Supply side addresses. Click on it. So let me save it in a different place now. Click on it. So let me save it in a different place actually. And then open it up and then have a look at it. C colon, I'm going to save it now. I click on save now. So let me have a look at the site. <clears throat> so it has opened up. I will now put the same value of this one. So this is now having what happens the show in folder. Let me make a modification of this one. Right like click on the rename it now. That was what happened. We already have one more template, the same name now. Uh, the action because the file is now open. Google Chrome file is already opened, I think, probably. <laughs> I've already opened it up. And click on. So click on OK now. So it's actually uh, the other file might have got open now. Supplier import template. And then uh, the one supplier address template. It's now having my value. <clears throat> Let me close this now. And I will again open it up. Supplier import template also. Now close it and I will again open it up now. So now let us now rename it. Let me see whether it allows to rename it. Okay, okay, okay. Let me rename it now. So we have separate test template one of the one. So let us see the country name as well as the other fields section. The error files are showing something. Go to this place. On enable field. And then go to this place. So, country, no, show additional attributes. Country is USA. That is what he has written. That is what I wanted actually. <laughs> and then uh, country is a one. And then uh, one of the field is a mandatory field. That is what you are saying. City is okay. State is okay. And country is a mandatory, but the remaining things he is not saying anything at all. And then we will now see what other fields have been made. And RFQ or bidding is no. Ordering is yes, okay, fine. Ordering and pay, you might have made it as a no, fine. Supplier address import, no. Ordering and then uh, this thing, but made as a no, fine. Now, RFQ or bidding must be no, fine. That is one thing. And then afterwards, you go there. Uh, <coughs> and then what else? Yes, made with a mandatory field. And then what else? Uh, yes, made with a mandatory field. Email is okay. It doesn't show even in the email, actually. Ah, so uh, one is what we'll now have again. Have a look at it again. Postal code is not a mandatory one now. RFQ or bidding, and then again is ordering and then pay. Fine. RFQ or bidding is no. That's okay. We we'll now see again the results. We'll now have a look at it. Where does the PDF, PDF is saying? RFQ or bidding purpose flag. So at least one of the following must be on. An ordering purpose flag, a remit to purpose flag, RFQ or bidding. RFQ or remit to purpose on ordering purpose. So now we'll open up ours now. Click on it. Let us open up ours now. Click on it. And then I'll go to this place. Open up ours now. Supply and address import template. Okay. That is one. And then this is without one now. So, this place country is USA. Yes, see it now. Click on it now. Address is USA. Country. 
pin code country again coming on the uh, that country only was mentioned there na fine i think there only they were mentioned it. country was there fine afterwards they are not mentioned anything only now let me see one by one and most solid <clears throat> RFQ or bidding, I will not make it as no no. That means what? If I make it as no, automatically ordering is as such. No, fine. I will not say ordering is yes no. And then uh, uh, pay is also yes. Fine. Ordering and pay. I think uh, these are important attributes which I forgot. No, fine. It must be made as a non no. Fine. That's it. I'm going to click on it. And then commit. No. You know that ordering and then RFQ and pay. All the things have been made properly. No. Go to the instructions and then let us know. Do generate the CSV file. So this time it is an address file whether A01 underscore EDDR1. Now I'm going to save it on the supplier. Click on it. Put space. And then go to the supplier import now. EDDR1 now. So zip file I'm going to save it. EDDR1, A01, EDDR1, EDDR2. I will say. And the second one. Let me bring it down. Click on it. So let us now make it as a second one. Thank you. on save now. <coughs> It has got click on save now. So this template, I'm not saving it now. It is not done. Let us go there and then bring it in now. We don't know. Let us keep it as such now. This file is not keep it because you have come on again. So monitor process and then let us not run it now. Second one I'm running it. So making mistakes and then I'm correcting it, <laughs> doing it after a very long time. <laughs> this happens. Okay. It needs a lot of patience with it. So supplier address I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on import address. Import supplier address. Bring this to the UZM area. Upload a new file. Choose a file. Address two is a one. So address two find it. Click on OK. You may even update it actually. If there is an error, we can even perform an update. I have not done it to the text and actually. But don't make any mistakes. That is the best way of doing it. So it's not running. So once one is complete, we will not do an import now. Second import, we are doing it now. From supplier address import, we are doing it again. Pause it one click on supplier. So the previous one has ended in an error actually. You must see first. The two out of five, which you are taken up for doing it now, and this is also ending up an error. Click on the view output of it. So click on it. And save. Show that. Open the report. So again, not imported the machine. There is a second one. Oh God. Valid. Value provider is inactive or invalid actually. And it is not you say. <laughs> But so that is the only error I think. Yes, that is the only error. So let us now correct the error. It may be USA. The valid is USA. Let us now provide as a US. What exactly the value? We <clears throat> go to the Excel sheet. So in the uh, the template, you can now see the template one actually. And template one. Uh, this is wrong. You see. So there he has put it as a USA. So this may not be the real one actually. There may be a country, city, state, province, country is blank here. That is why I kept this a blank actually. Hmm. Hmm. So shall I put as US you know, see, you know, make it as a US and then see. So the country USA is not valid. So let's now make it as a US. So it will be a template actually. Yes. <clears throat> Commit. Okay, okay. Now we go to the import and then I click on it now and now creating the address three actually. 
So it's a A01 underscore address three and making it on the supply equation. Address three and making it. So click on save. Click on save. Okay, and close it. Don't save. And then go there. In the monitor process, let us now run the process again. So after many errors, what happens? It does not come to one error actually. The country was wrongly mentioned. Let us hold that this time. <clears throat> See, Murga then submit it. This time it will come. Drop it down. Supply address and you know, import supply address. So import supply address and bring it back using a hundred new point, which is fine. <clears throat> And then address three, the one. Like Gajani Mohammed, whatever we are now again and again fighting it out. <laughs> so click on submit. So click. The three files will be running now. So once it must come, it will again go on the import the supplier address. Again. The third file is not running. So it's a So let's go there and then import it. Okay. Connections and go back. Import supply address. <clears throat> Pass on these parameters. This time it has to say no errors. Yes. So it has succeeded. Fine, go there. Click on the view output now. Click on it. Now save it over here. Now. Click on show all. Click on this report. Now. So number of supplies imported is one now. Ayya, one the chi. Go there. Not imported is zero actually. Not imported is zero. Go there. And you can see that one. You can see. United so viewers, if you put it is not taking it as the order, it is the ordering and remit to have been on, and that is the mistake I made now. So it has now created. So address is now completed successfully. So 105. So easy to one address one is on time. Close it. And then close this and then close this Now we go there, and then we will know the second one is completed. We'll now go for the third one now. Import suppliers. Import the third one. And go to the actions and then supplier sites. I'm going to import now. So all the parameters are okay. Then click on submit now. It is now submitted. <clears throat> Supplier sites are getting imported. Now. For the creation of a supply site, uh, you must have what happens, uh, the procurement agent being done. Yeah, not done. So click on the view output now. It is now completed. Okay. Click on save now. Control all. How about it? So number of sites uh, sub supply sites imported is one actually. I'm not coming up properly. Go for that. And not imported is zero. Go there. You see what happens. So here's one business unit. Uh, procurement BU and then the supply site name is site one and go to number of sites imported is one this is also complete. The third one is not complete. Then close it now. So site is now imported. <clears throat> and then now we go to this place now. Okay. And the fourth one we are going to put action. And the fourth one is site assignments. This is equivalent to multi-org access control of EBS basically. And click on it. Import on that form. Send all these parameters as a team. And click on it. Site assignments is not coming up. The limit might have been uh, what happens removed previously. Uh, I we did it some three years back. Right? I don't remember exactly how we did. Other end there was a limit. Okay. Again, this is an error now. Oh God, you must see the error now. Find site assignments is not having an error. You know, view the errors. Open it up and then have a look at the error now. <clears> 
<clears throat> so supply side assignment is not imported as one. So here ship the location code. Seattle, Seattle is wrong actually. Ship to and build the location. So I think that is not a absolute must actually. The BU is a must actually. Seattle, C A T T L E. I might have given a wrong value. Okay. Uh, anyway, we'll not try to correct it now. Fine. The ship location code and the build location code is wrong. It is saying no. So I will go there and then and duplicate it and then see this one. Right click and then duplicate it. And try to find out the locations. So click on it. And then and then set up on maintenance. Had it been my structure, I would have been put up the appropriate value. But uh, since it's a vision instance, uh, I made a mistake. I think. <clears throat> click on it. And then click on search now. Here, yep. and then manage locations. So it's manage facility. Locations definitely will be for me. So it's manage locations. Click on it. So the name is C A T T L E. Click on the search for this location. So it's already come. Uh, so the location is US location set actually. The C A T T L E. Seattle is the one. The location name is Seattle. <clears throat> So it belongs to some other uh, set actually, this location set actually. I will now see what are the error of the C A T T L E is the one. No, this error, this error is not, this is not complete now. The C A T T L E only. So let me keep it as blank and then uh, bring it in now. I have a doubt on this one. Super location, little locations are wrong. One side now, but here it is also saying the same thing. The C A T T L E only. <clears throat> ah, probably they may be using some other uh, what I was values over here now. So because of it, it's not coming. So let me go and then modify that to the remove it now. So again, uh, make an R and D on this now so that what I was must be able to do it properly. So it's on a site assignments. What are the thing? Uh, what are the problem here? Now? In this case, I see on the report on the site assignments only. We have another problem. Site assignments is not running. So site assignments is problem. So let's now uh, modify this now. <clears throat> Go there. So site assignments only. Support supply 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 site assignments only. Let me modify. It has accepted every other thing, but. Seattle is not accepting it. C A T T L E, come on here. C A T T L E, remove this one. But that is not a mandatory one while you're importing it now. That's it. Because with the client BU and the build to BU, procurement BU are important now. So let us now perform a site assignments on this one. Click on it. Generate CSV file. So it's a A01 underscore site underscore. Assign underscore to <coughs> site assignments to that is uh, so not save it in the separate import file. So click on save now. Okay, it's got only one sheet now without saving. Come over here and just me and then bring it to the interface to also. Click on it. Site assignments, I'm going to bring it in now. So go there, import supplier site as an Import supplier site as an Import supplier site as an Drop it down. And then click on upload a new file. Choose a file. Site assignments to the file. Name. Site assignments to. Click on open. Click on OK now. That file is going to the place now. And then click on submit. We have also learned about how not to make mistakes. Click on submit. 
So wait for other things to complete. Then we'll now bring it in. So it's completed and do that. So let us now go to the info suppliers and we into the site as well. So the fourth one we're going to do it. So click on submit. So it has succeeded finally, fine. Yeah. Click on the output now. Open it up. See, but I am not given the site built on so ship to locations basically. So import it as one actual, and then we have to fill it up. I don't know where from it is coming, why it is not from. I can understand that now. So not imported as zero. Now it shows you this. So total supply site assignments imported as one actual. And the site is item one, and that's it. The client view this is the answer. If you give US, remember it is now automatically putting the United States as a country. Actually, fine. US is sufficient, it seems now. And then, and then close this now. Seattle is not accepting it. I don't know why. So. And we'll now go for the final one and click on it. And then go to the actions and then finally supplier contacts. Three more are there. This is a lab access for you. Import supplier contacts and go there. Click on submit now. And click on OK. <clears throat> So the filled in templates I'm going to upload you and try to find the location and then also you try to populate it and then if you're succeeding it please inform me that uh, what is the location we had to put it and Seattle is not working. So now no running, contacts is no running. But of course if you correct your template once afterwards whatever you don't have to worry at all. The same template can be used for the particular versions from fine. I didn't mean doing it. It's again ended in the error now. Now have a look at it. What is the error now? This may be the country error, I think, probably. You don't know, save now. Open it up. Then save this now. <clears throat> so not imported as one now. Fine. Address is not imported as one now. Okay. So the reason <clears throat> and error record contact your desk fine with that. Name, first name, last name, contact interface, ACE ID. Come on. What is the error now? And record, contact your help desk, contact the interface ID. The interface ID is not giving a problem, okay? The first name and last name. No, I think the last name is a mandatory field. I think. Now, see what is the mandatory field over there? So, again, okay, done. A supplier contact cannot be derived for the record actually. Email address value, oh, this is also here. Okay. Me at you.com. So let us not bypass this, but I think one of the address, my last name is Ananta Nana. Address name is address fine. So that, <clears throat> A01 address one. The supplier and the contact. Rejection reason is not which reason. The supplier contact cannot be derived. For the record, how come it's capital A, capital N actually everywhere seems to be okay? <laughs> okay, fine, that's it. And then I record contact, this contact interface ID. So let us now remove this name basically. I don't know, we'll now have a look at it whether the name is a mandatory one or not. So click on done. We'll open up any supplier and then see this now. And then go there, put the manage suppliers. So here you know, search for Bitcoin in ABC. There will be some supplier and you can search now. Yeah. So ABC Bank is there and go to click on a bit now. I don't know what is the context area of this now. You know, see this. You go to the context. Now. So select it and then click on edit now. You know, see what is mandatory and what is not mandatory now. There's an administrative contact is okay. Some contact is a face ID. 
first name last name both are mandatory here so both are mandatory here administrative contact we can even enable email is okay i don't know how it's saying as on status will be active or what you know open up a sheet and see it's not going to work it so we'll now go to the contacts area and supplier contact info double click on contact info uh supplier name uh, so it has uh, it has got how many sheets actually so we'll now go to the first sheet and the first sheet action is create and so this is not a good first name first name new middle name you know okay and last name is no uh, job title is not a good administrative contacts are no serious administrative contact there is no value at all no serious why are you not doing so email i have to give this one right here i'm setting e at you dot that i have not given so it is not verifying that email i think probably so email is now here Administrative contact is being made as this now. Email is being made. One country code. One country code. One country code. So let me remove the fax code. Now with the desk, I don't know why. Because without a phone, fax may not be there. But something with it may be there. Ha! So go to go to the home, and then see this now. So I am given the first name, last name, and then I am made the administrative contact as yes, and then and even an email also here now. And then I go to the second tab again. Click on the second tab again. Go to the second supplier name. So address name is correct. And first name, last name, email. Right? It is now matching with the first street actually. Email was not there. Email has been there. Okay. So let us now go and then contacts. I am going to do it. Okay. So let us generate the CSV file for the contact. Okay. So it's a A zero one underscore contact underscore two now. A zero one contact underscore two. Contact. Click on save. So click on save. It has got two sheets, so two sheets are coming up now. And you click on OK and then close it. Don't save now. Now go there and then do it. Don't save. <clears throat> so go to this place and then schedule new process. It's a contacts one, which I am not doing it. Drop it down. It's for the contact actually. Supplier contact. Import supplier contacts. Go down and then choose the upload a new file. Choose a file. Contact two is the one which I will wait. So here is the one contact two. Can you open? Open. Open. Okay. By which process it comes to the UCM area? Universal. Universal contact. Environment. And then click on submit. Now it comes to the base tables, interface tables actually. So email was missing on the first sheet, so second sheet is not able to refer. And then I have added only one contact, administrative contact has been added. First name, last name. So then now at least it should get solved, or otherwise the error has to be done. Go there. So in the second one only we are doing. So click on cancel. Status active is there. Now why that is required? Cancel it. So click on done. Then click on done. Go there. And then you go to the import suppliers and then import the contacts. Interactions. Or import supplier contacts. No running. So it's running. It has succeeded. Don't mind the technical. Let's see. So, get out. Supplier contact not imported is one. Oh God! 
supplier contacts imported is one <laughs> so you know saying not imported is one and then uh, supplier contacts imported is one fine both things are coming up as such you know saying so it is it is what it is fine supplier contacts not imported is one an error occurred contact your help desk fine ananta nana contact interface value is two no no so this one and then afterwards finally it says number of uh, contacts imported is zero at least the email problem has gone now fine email is not giving a problem actually and then the supplier contacts import reports now fine nothing is imported actually uh let's go to the next sheet now fine so here it says what supplier contact import report ananta nana address one fine the total number of contacts address imported is one oh god <laughs> it's really very confusing report now fine so finally it has imported it fine import options is new report etc so it's now saying is one no so total number of contacts imported is one no on the fourth sheet actually contacts imported is one no and the previous sheet not imported is zero okay and then the previous sheet whatever the number of contacts imported is zero fine why it's showing zero this is unable to understand and then this is not imported is one no but there it is imported is one fine so it's a totally a confusing report actually and then the header cell all of what am i saying supply contact not imported is one number of contacts imported is one fine come on two three things are coming and okay fine maybe the previous one uh, maybe giving error actually fine okay. so not imported should go on and see this one now it's giving a different value so the value is one now the value is two now and the card contact is also one so let us now see on the and uh, we will now have a look at the supplier it's in that so we will now go there and then look at the supplier now <clears throat> click on okay so click on that now but it has succeeded and then uh, <clears throat> you know look at the supplier okay. go there and then go to the manage suppliers and have a look at it a01 and then click on search now it is now come over here import supplier from here click on it and click on edit now you now directly go to the contact now you go to the contacts and have a look at it click on the contacts so there are two contacts which came in now Fine. One with the email ID and one without the email ID. So one without the email ID has failed actually. Fine. One with the email ID has succeeded actually. And then she did contact me. Okay. Then I get why it has gone. It's gone as a two one. And go there. So name, everything is there. Email is there. Administrative contact is there. And then whatever the contact address is also there. <clears throat> the thing which is not there, we'll now have a look at it now. Fine. Close it now. The thing which is not there, we'll go click on this one. <clears throat> go on the manage suppliers. Click again and then edit now. So put the contacts now. <clears throat> so the thing which is not there, and the email is not there. We must see what happens. Select it and then click on edit now. The name is come. Email is not there. Administrative contact is not there. The contact address is also not there. It has to have an address actually. I don't understand about why the second uh, why it has done two times actually. Maybe when I imported for the first time, it would have got recorded over here with the off area, and then I should have corrected it. I think. I should I should not have updated again. So it is now listing down what happens one unsuccessful one and then one successful one also. So the mistake is what I should not have created another site, but I should have what happens I should have uh, corrected updated it. Existing one should have been updated. That was a mistake actually, fine because of which uh, this has happened actually. So this has happened. So the existing one has to be updated. And let us now try to update with a different name actually. We'll now see what happens now. The existing one should have been updated. So go there. I will now go to the supplier contact import template now, and open it up. And then uh, let me do perform an update on the existing one. Now. Um, the template itself is modified now. Fine, it's very difficult actually. The template itself is modified now. Um, what to do on this one? Fine. Shall I change the names and then do it now? Because it's already gone in now. Oh God, I don't know how to do it now. Fine. So try to make an R and D about how to update it, because I'm not very sure about how to update it. Because the template itself is now modified; it's now having a, a value. So with a great struggle, I succeeded. We can say 90% success, and again 10% failed on some some areas. No, uh, rather than the contact area, I had a problem actually. So it's all up to you to what happens. Uh, do an R and D, and then what happens? Uh, tell me about. Uh, uh, where and all uh, we can be improvised, and then uh, it, please teach me uh, where and all I'm missing on sometimes. A long time back, I completed this one. Uh, I have not uh, done this uh, supply import for a pretty long time. 
uh, and again uh, this is the responsibility of the payable stream and any other person you discuss with them and then do it now fine it has to be even more and more fields have to be populated so you may even get some more errors also fine so best wishes at least what happens i will introduce you uh, the supplier import for you fine so this will be giving you a good amount of uh, idea about it fine so that so we'll now see on the next video bye for now best wishes